the future of contemporary Western art is Tracy Stuckey. I think what he's doing is absolutely phenomenal. It's a very photorealistic looking thing, but the subject matter is just completely bizarro. And he's got a great imagination. Tracy Stuckey, <laughs> the future of Western pop art. <laughs> From the granddaddy. Yeah, I know. That's a big, uh, that was a big compliment. So I really, I really was flattered by that. I was really kind of, uh, that was, that was very nice of him to say that. So, and it means, yeah, it means a lot coming from him. So. You guys have never met. He says you emailed him. I did. I shot him an email. <clears throat> I shot him an email because I was very flattered by that compliment. So, yeah. So I reached out to him. So hopefully we'll get in touch together. So at some point. So I haven't heard back from him, but yeah, hopefully at some point I'll hear back from him. So I've known of his work for a you know, I probably ever since I lived in New Mexico. So after graduate school, I worked as an art handler for a company for about three years. And I'm sure that I came across his work probably in that instance. So and just being in New Mexico, but then he, uh, he also shows with Visions West Contemporary, they started showing his work. I remember as soon as they did, then I, I became even more familiar with his work. So I think I think because of that, maybe that's where where we kind of came across each other's work a little bit. You know, you, we, we, we see paintings like yours and, and, but it doesn't occur to you that there's like a, there was a trajectory, a historical. Yeah. Outlook. Yeah. And especially for him to be so tied to that, that kind of whole pop art history and for him to have worked with, you know, with Warhol and to be around all that. I mean, just, I mean, that was just kind of blew my mind, you know, like he was saying most of the time when you, when you, when people think of, of Western art, it, it you think of really conservative kind of work that's wrapped in, <clears throat> I think, you know, a lot of nostalgia and a lot of romanticism about, you know, an era and, and, and a way of, of life. And yeah, for him, for him to take that sort of different view on it, uh, I think it was pretty impressive. And so. Um, have, you, have you been looking at, when you were sort of developing your body of work, did, were you looking at that? those guys at anybody? Uh, I mean, not per se. I mean, actually, like, I think because with my work, you know, it's funny, I, I you know, I mean, I, I don't consider, it's it's always tricky. I'm like, I don't know if I would call myself a Western artist, you know, it's like, I, I just end up dealing with that as a subject matter. And I don't want to say that, like, I'm making fun of Western art or like sort of conservative Western art. But I think what I'm, what I'm interested in is, is how, you know, all the romanticism that's wrapped up in that and all the, I think the archetypes that are wrapped up in it and how can I take that and, and apply it you know in sort of a more contemporary way but then I'm also interested in how all of those sort of ideas wrapped in it how, then sort of filter their way into popular culture you know that exists right now I mean um and the genre itself, just in terms of like the, the grand Western genre is so huge and it's been around for so long. There's a lot that's there in terms of, I guess, fodder for, you know, for interesting work and whatnot. I mean, I kind of stumbled into it as well. I mean, partially it just kind of came from, you know, having lived in New Mexico. So when I felt like I kind of maybe understood a little bit more like what some of the reality is of, of kind of the, the West and its histories and, and breaking that down a little bit and how, you know, kind of flawed some of our ideas are about it. That, that That's when I really, it started to slowly filter in as a, as a part of a subject matter. And then eventually it's just, I, I think just having that be so interesting to me and then diving deeper and deeper into it. In terms of artists that I would look at I and mean, actually look at a lot of those artists that you know Remington and Russell and you know even some other uh, uh, there's the you know some of the Taos painters a for just sort of the way that they painted because there's a lot of great painters within the genre for sure but then just sort of that the, the subject matter you know compositions all of those kinds of things I really you know I continue to look at those things and then they find their way into my paintings you know and I mean you can even find Remington paintings in the backgrounds in a lot of my paintings or, you know, things of that nature, but also just other pop cultural aspects of it, you know, in terms of, of um, you know, film and literature and music and all that kind of fashion is like a huge thing. Cause I, I have been, I got really, that's, I think one of the things that, that sort of jumped into the work first, you know, cause there's so much, I don't know, there's sort of a trendy fashion, you know, everybody loves to dress up like they're, you know, put their cowboy outfit on and whatnot. So even if they're, you know, even if it's just a costume, you know, everybody kind of likes to play that every once in a while. So sort of cosmic cowboy from the city, Dallas. Uh, yeah, sort of mix of uh, 
real and, and costume people, I guess. So. Uh, would you would you consider your? I, I think that your work is almost surreal. I can. I mean, I can certainly see that. You know, I mean, I. Um, yeah, it is. It is sort of surreal. I mean, it's. You know, they're meant to be a little bit lighthearted. They're. You know, they uh, they sort of mimic classic Western paintings, and some sometimes they do. I make satirical Western paintings, and so it's. You know, they're. Um, but they're they're kind of more of a I guess a more of a satirical look at them I guess. Are you using models? No. So w well, what I end up doing is so I work from photographs. I'll make a digital collage, a uh, mixture of different things, either found photographs, photographs that I take, you know, little clippings here and there, and I I digitally collage it all together and sort of make the image that I want to work from. Yeah, it's like the smallest little things I'll have to add in there, you know, whether it's you know, squirt guns or you know, an arm that's not right or something like that. But I'll do, typically, yeah, I'll just find, uh, you know, images that sort of work for me. I show up in my paintings just because I'm a cheap model. You know, I end up figuring out what sort of uh, goofy position I want to be in for the painting. And so I'll show up, you know, every once in a while. And even if it's I have to use my body, but like throw somebody else's head on it or something like that. So there was a point at which I got really tired of, of seeing myself in my paintings. And so um, I, I went on a little thing where I, I didn't show up in my paintings for a little while. I think because people kept thinking it was about me and I was like yeah I was like I'm a cheap model and that's about it so yeah, I'm, no that's just me with my shirt off yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's not me so that's usually someone that's a body double there so yeah the, are you using projected imagery like, are you using an overhead projector yeah so once I get the once I get the image that I want to work with I'll project it up onto the canvas and just get everything where I want it I didn't start that till a, a couple years ago and mostly it was just sort of uh, I think with having kids and, and picked up at the gallery a little bit I just it seemed like you know you spend a lot of time otherwise just sort of mapping it all out and really just drawing it by hand so the early paintings I just did by you know I didn't project occasionally I would grid off certain things and do it that way but eventually I was it just I needed it to be I needed it to go a little bit faster and so that was the point of like starting to grit or starting to project it up there and there's also a lot of stuff at least for me and I don't know if it's just because I teach fundamentals of design uh, sometimes at, at the university and so I, I kind of nerd out a little bit with like some of the the structure of the painting and so I really you know I use the computer to really figure out putting certain things exactly where I want them in the frame and so I found it's once I you know get it up onto like a four by five canvas or five by six canvas it's a little bit more a little bit more work to get it where I want it to be and so if I can do it on a small digital scale then I can project it up there and get things exactly in the right spot where I want them so yeah. and you're a professor I teach part-time at, at Colorado State University and then I also a couple of years ago I started running one of the gallery spaces that's at the university I sort of coordinate with there's a committee that is kind of the curatorial committee and I do I do you know some of the grunt work and then also all you know some of the leg work I guess for it I like working just on canvas most of the time, and I just uh, I just do a standard primed surface, and then uh, I work with a lot of the Gamblin mediums, basically. So like the the Galkit light is the the thing that I use most of the time in terms of like a medium that I like to work with. So do you have a lot of texture? You know, my painting method is not a lot of layers. I mean, there's usually like some sort of uh, color to begin with, just so it's not a straight white canvas. Although sometimes I do really like a white canvas, so. Um, and then, you know, I build up sort of like just mostly the lights and darks and then I kind of come through and lay all the color work on the top of it and, and really do the meat of the painting, usually in one or two passes. I have a hard time, I have a really hard time if I've already painted, kind of painting back over that. If there's all the wrinkles of the, the older painting underneath it, it's just sort of, I don't know, it's kind of like, it's a hard thing for me to wrap my head around or get, get over, I guess, so. My favorite uh, series of yours, I don't know if it's a series, but it looks like there's you know, two or three. It's the, it's the horse, it's the, the, the riders on the uh, oh, quarter, quarter horses. Oh, the, the little, the toy horses or the, the machine horses at the grocery store. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, those are, those are, those seem to, they kind of keep showing back up every once in a while. They're a great way for me to kind of, uh play around uh in the paintings so yeah i've done i've actually done uh, several of those those paintings throughout so it's like it's able to kind of go in and out of, of i think some of the different uh, uh sort of bodies of work that i've made so yeah, yeah they're a lot of fun um you, so you have, you're not classifying yourself completely with western art who are you considering to be your contemporaries 
Oh, uh, contemporaries? <laughs> yeah, as you're preparing for your museum retrospective. Yeah, but, um, you're in some museums and stuff now, so you're kind of a little a bit of a forerunner. Yeah. Well, it's I've had a <clears throat> I've had a I've had a little you know, I've had a string of, of good luck and I feel really, you know, I feel really blessed and, and, and kind of lucky with all that. It kind of yeah, it's it's yeah, it's nice. So of uh, Fort Collins, Colorado. Do you say that, or do you say where do you say you're from, Indiana? I mean, I was born in Indiana, but I mo I grew up mostly in Florida, so I, it's hard to say like where I'm. You know, originally from Indiana, but mostly from Florida. I would say where I grew up, but then uh, we've bounced around quite a bit. So it's been from Florida to New Mexico, and then New Mexico to West Virginia, and West Virginia now to Colorado. So, but we're here. You know, we've been here now for about. Six seven years I think we're going on so yeah so as the future of western pop art <laughs> where do you see the future going what what's your what are you what are you planning I mean for me right now what's been interesting is so we just got back from being in Mexico for eight months yeah. so I have all these ideas for these Mexico paintings so this is uh this painting is, is one of the paintings I did in Mexico so they're I don't know. It's, I'm still trying to wrap my head around my experience that I had there. I think I went down to Mexico uh, with a lot of ideas about what I wanted to do. And then once I got there, I, you know, I realized like I, it just wasn't, that wasn't the thing that I was going to do. But I, yeah, I'm trying to figure out a way to kind of weave the two worlds together a little bit. I'm interested in sort of, you know, the way that, uh, you know, the way that Mexico is seen within, you know, American popular culture and especially Western, you know, pop culture. So it's very, you know, talk about being flawed. So yeah, I'm just trying to figure out right now, like what's the best way to kind of go about doing that. But also I think in the immediate, most of the paintings feel very just sort of biographical, autobiographical, where I'm just trying to, you know, deal with my experiences that I had down there and, and uh, try and visually recreate those a little bit. So I don't know if like people would look at them and think that they have, they fit in that sort of Western genre, but some of them maybe do, but it's, we'll see how, once it gets all together, how that works out. Is that a dead dog on that card? It's not. So it's actually, it's a, there was a, one of the routes that we took to take our kids to school every day. There was the, uh, this old beater car sitting out in front of this uh, family's house. And there was a, there was always a dog or two sleeping on top of it. Um, everybody had dogs in the town that we were in and it's just sort of, you know, it's everybody's alarm system. Basically that's what they have. It's just, you know, just dogs around. Um, so there's dogs and chickens and, and stuff like that. And, and it's just, it's just a part of it. But yeah, I remember seeing this dog sleeping there every morning and I was where I, you know, would drive by. And I just, I was like, oh, I've got to fit that into a painting at some point. So. Well, excellent. So we're going to keep our eyes open for the Mexico series. Yeah. We'll, so. we'll probably do, that'll probably do really well in Santa Fe. Well, Tracy Stuckey, thank you. Thank you for meeting with me. It was a pleasure. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it was great to meet you. So thanks for, thanks for getting in touch. So yeah. talk to Billy, tell him to send me an email. So. Yeah, well, he, yeah, he's, he, he, he's looking forward to seeing the video. Cool. Awesome. So that's cool. So you guys are, maybe you guys will. I know. Well, I get, I still have friends down in New Mexico. So it'd be great to eventually when the, yeah, when the world turns back to normal, maybe uh, get a chance to meet up with him. Sounds like he's really involved down there. So. Well, you know, he's got this, uh, he's got the Schenck Foundation, Schenck Southwest. Yeah. That's um, cool. And he's putting together these museum retrospectives. So maybe that's your in. Yeah. No, that sounds cool. You're kind of curatorial yourself, right? Yeah. Yeah, he's, yeah. So maybe you can collaborate with it. Visions West will be like, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Do it. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. Well, thanks, man. I really appreciate it. It's great to talk to you. Good to meet you. Yeah, you too. Have a good, uh, have a good day. Thanks, you too. Thank you. Bye. Hi, guys. I hope you liked this video. Don't forget to subscribe and like.